Welcome back to Wildlife Wednesday. Today is part two of our lesson on animal tracks. So last time we learned about the trails that animals leave behind. So bounders, waddlers, hoppers, and straight walkers all leave behind different trails. Once you've found a trail and you've figured out what group that animal probably belongs to, you can start to take some measurements to figure out which species in particular left that trail. And wow, what do you know? I found a trail right here. So I think this trail belongs to a straight walker, probably a canine or a dog of some sort, but which species in particular? The first thing I'm gonna do is think about some clues. Am I in a neighborhood? Are those tracks running around all over the place? Are there human tracks nearby? Well, then those tracks probably belong to somebody's dog. But if they're moving in a straight direction with purpose, and I'm in the middle of a field or a forest, they probably belong to a wild dog, a fox, a coyote, maybe even a wolf. So how do I determine which one? So the first measurements we're gonna take are stride and straddle. Now stride is basically the length between tracks. To get stride, we are going to measure from the front of one footprint to the front of a track made by that same foot. So if we measure the stride of this animal, it appears to be about 14 and a half inches. Different people do measure this different ways, so it's best to look at your field guide and figure out which method they're using. Straddle is up next and is the width of the tracks. So people also measure this in different ways, but I'm going to measure it from the outside of one foot to the outside of the other foot. So this straddle of this animal appears to be about seven centimeters. Now remember, depending how this animal is moving, if it's running or trotting, walking or sliding down a hill, stride and straddle can be different. So we better get some measurements of the individual tracks as well. So let's start with the width of the track. So you go to the widest part of the track and this track appears to be about one and one fourth inches wide. Remember, you wanna be a little conservative because tracks can splay out in the mud, soil, or snow. Now let's see how long this track is. So I'm not going to include the claws in this measurement. Um, so if we start at the front of the toe pad to the back here, it's just about two inches in length. By looking at my field guide, I can tell these tracks are way too small to be a wolf track. Wolf tracks can be up to five inches long. The stride and straddle are also a bit small. Coyotes can have strides of around 26 inches or so. So by combining all these measurements and clues from my surroundings, I can make a pretty educated guess that this is probably the trail of a red fox. So remember when you're out in the field trying to ID tracks or maybe taking pictures or measurements to have an expert help you ID them, the more photos, measurements, clues you can give, the more likely you are to get an answer. Take measurements of the claws, the spaces between the pads, and remember if you're taking pictures, include a ruler, your hand, maybe even a coin for reference. Next time, we're gonna talk about those unique moments when you do find that perfect track in the mud and some aspects you can look at to help narrow it down to the species 